Thank you very much, Roger, for the nice introduction. I would like also to thank the organizer for establishing this uh, yeah, seminar, as well as thank you for coming along and listening to the different speakers, as well as now to my presentation. We changed now the topic. We are not anymore in the processing. We are going back to the raw material handling for the grain management. So what we know usually is that grain management is a definitely a hazard, particularly in the tropics. I share some not so nice pictures, but they are very common in the industry. We see the sticking of the grain to the silo wall. We see also the effect on the grain to the silo wall getting corrosion. So it's a massive disaster, having not only lost grain, but also getting infrastructure demolished. Things can be very serious, that suddenly the gravity flow of grain is destructed, meaning somebody has to empty the bin manually, which is an absolute dangerous job. So we know grain handling is a hazard, but how to solve and what are the issues we have to face for our grain management. One thing is that grain is a life organism. It is not dead like a gravel or a sand or a stone, but it is a creature having a sustainable chemical reaction called respiration. This respiration activity depends on its temperature and moisture content and is producing a lot of energy, which is one of the problems in our bins where we see temperature rising to critical levels. Even sometimes fire can happen, which is of course a disaster as nobody can extinguish a fire of grain. You just have to wait that it's burned down. So depending on the moisture content and the temperature of the grain, we see different heat generations of the grain on this chart. For the example given here, a grain 30 degree warm, 14.5% moisture content, we generate an energy content of 0.8 megajoule per ton per day. With increasing temperature, this would be increasing as well, with increasing moisture content the same, and both reactions are exponential. It means a slight change brings massive energy increase, and this energy increase is now just for the energy uh, release from the grain and creating problems as we have seen before because all those problems are related to hot grain inside the bin and even an aeration system may not be suitable to overcome this. But what else does it mean if we have a heat rise in the grain? And that should be our concern as well. And that's why I shift now to another slide showing what this energy release means to our grain mass. So we have the same example, we have a corn, 14.5% moisture content, 30 degree warm, we keep it for four months, we keep 10,000 tons, and we put all this in the grain loss equation and see then the result in the lower end concerning about the temperature of 30 degrees centigrade, we lose about 75 metric ton of grain by pure respiration, equal to about 22,000 euros at a market price of 300, tons, uh, 300 euros per ton. We know that corn is more and more expensive. It may be even not anymore a true value, maybe sometimes it's even higher. If you have a chance to reduce the temperature, which is of course critical in tropical region where the ambient is always hot, then we could have saved some grain and if we could bring it down to a very low temperature, like in moderate climates during winter season, then we wouldn't have any loss of grain. So we see the potential of reducing temperature could change the situation of not only saving the crop, but also avoiding this critical situation that respiration causes damage to the grain and to the infrastructure. We know what Grain, cool, grain handling is even more critical when it comes to hazards from outside, so post-harvest management related. Now we see the weevil issue, which is the predominantly major hazard of grain handling, grain storage. Globally said it's about 80% of grain loss caused by the insects. Nevertheless, the industry is using a lot of chemicals to treat it. However, we see tendencies of resistance, which is in the end a trouble where we say now we have a dead and 
reach where chemicals may not help us in the near future. So what could be another solution? And I go back again to that topic which I mentioned, temperature. Let's see how insects are affected by different temperature levels. Here we see different species. Each species is marked with a column. The column has a color code, red, yellow, white. We see color code is according to the temperature scale, which is on the left side of that graphic. Temperature reaches from minus to 40 degrees centigrade. And according to the optimal development, we see the red area where those insects are really having fun in our brain, destroying a lot of brains, of course, but uh, being very serious for us in losing massively brains. However, if we have a chance to reduce the temperature, we see that they slow down. Slow down in the activity in two ways. First, they slow down in the fertility. Not each egg will hatch. Not any lar all larvae will develop. But in addition, their life cycle span is extended. Extended massively that they may not close it in 28 days, but they may need three months to complete it if the temperature is very low. And if you come to the wide area, we come to so that a point where suddenly the insects fall into hibernation. Hibernation is so that the stop mode of the insect. I always compare with a light bulb without electricity. The light bulb is still there, but it's not shining. So the weevil is there, but not active. So this would be a good chance to go low to these temperature levels, which is, of course, easy in winter zones like in Europe, but very difficult in regions like the tropics if I'm not having a technology achieving this. Coming to the third point, what is another hazard in feed milling? Of course, the fungus. Fungus infestation, the mycotoxins, major concern. Chemicals are also used to prevent this by fungus inhibitors or mycotoxin binders, a costly, expensive solution. And I also want to trigger your attention to that particular picture where you see the corrugated sheet of the silo on the outer side. And near to this is a massive infestation. And that is also hardly to ignore because this is mainly a reason why corn is a critical feed. Resources as it is segregated by filling it into a silo. And that's why we have a massive moisture agglomeration on the site where then the fungus can grow. But again, when we look into how to prevent mycotoxins as well as the fungus, then we can go into a diagram like this, where we see all the different species of the significant fungi developing according to the relative humidity, the temperature and the moisture content of the grain. <coughs> Good for all grains being less than 14% moist because they are safe for the fungus. But as we know that we have a moisture span in our, uh, arranged in our grains where we estimate 14% yeah, is average, but it may be plus minus in the total, we still have some grains will be affected by fungus and mycotoxin comes to rise. And therefore, we can consider if we go to lower temperatures here, maybe again in a span of 10 to 20 degree, then we can save a safety belt, open a safety belt to the storage condition, where we see that suddenly a grain which even higher moisture content could be safe from fungus development as the temperature is preventing. Here I mark it now with a blue area, so you can understand in this area even a moist drain can be saved just by controlling it by low temperatures. So what could be done now if you want to achieve a lower temperature to avoid this respiration issue, the weevil issue, as well as the mycotoxin or fungus issue? And I shift to this sheet where we show our technology which we promote since now yeah, 60 years a grain cooler, 
which is now applying the right temperature, the right relative humidity to the bulk storage situation and brings the temperature down by just applying temporarily in a batch operation this to the grain and to bring the temperature down. So in this way we can shift the same installation to use it on different silos, batch by batch, bring it down, done, not continuously operated as it is not required since a grain which falls in a low temperature level stops its respiration to a very low level. It has no heat rise from internally and the ambient heat, which is of course present in the tropics, is not an issue since grain is a very poor heat conductor or opposite said, a good insulator. Means it would need a long time that it comes to increase the temperature by the nature and ambient condition of the tropics to warm up again since the grain insulates by low moisture content and low heat conductivity. This technology is applied to many kinds of crops, also to high grade crops like coffee or cacao, which is of course not our topic today, but for the mass crops which are used in feed production. It is a standard operation where grain handling needs to be settled and saved. And accordingly, it shows you the advantages which have been mentioned by just controlling the temperature level to a very low region. So riskless long-term storage, minimizing respiration losses, and also preventing <coughs> issues like condensed water rise inside saving infrastructure by avoiding corrosive atmospheres inside, then avoiding expensive and risky chemical treatments for insects, since a hibernating insect is not an issue, and when we get it milled later in the mill, it is killed. Then we can also go for organic production, as we don't need chemicals. On the other side, of course, Mycotoxins and fungus are not anymore an issue, saves costs, saves hazards. And when we look into the simplification of the storage management, avoiding those standard treatments, aeration, circulation, fumigation, by just a simple treatment in the beginning of the storage time, we can understand that storage manager feel relieved by all that to ease to a very simple standard application, just make it cold and you are done. And all is independent to the weather operation, meaning here in the tropics you don't have to worry about hot environment or about rains like monsoons, where you say now a ration cannot be done and I'm handicapped by the misery that my grain is going to be spoiled sooner or later. So in this way we have a very easy way to control everything by just making it code. Thank you very much for your attention.